So we're gonna be making liang pi today and it is a dish from kind of northern central China and what is so unique about this noodle dish is you end up using and eating everything. So what I mean is you essentially start off with a dough ball that you wash out in water so that all of the starches kind of release and what you end up with is this patty of gluten which you then steam and you add on top of your noodles later for protein. What you have left over in the bowl is essentially just wheat starch and water which then can be steamed and then cut into these perfect noodles. The dish is pretty much finished off with some Sichuan spices and some oils and then of course that seitan is um, put on top. So it's just a really unique dish that uses everything in the recipe. So um, I hope you guys all enjoy. Okay, so we're just gonna start off making a dough ball. So two cups of all-purpose flour, a generous sprinkling of salt, and then right around two-thirds of a cup of water. You just really wanna bring everything together into a ball and then knead it just for a couple of minutes. So let it rest for right around 15 minutes and then fill the bowl up with water. I think I used about three and a half cups and then later on I added about another like cup and a half. So five cups of water in total. And you're gonna start what's called washing the gluten. So you kind of just stick your hands in there and you squeeze and it's a little bit like washing clothes. It's um, at first it's kind of it's it's pretty intact and you're just stretching it out but later on as it goes you're just kind of trying to squish it and then get the starches to release leaving only the gluten behind and um, this process took around six to eight minutes for me before I went to round two of the washing. So this is the second wash and you do this for a couple of minutes as well and just remember to save all of that liquid because we will need it for the noodles later. And as you do this, you can just feel the, the ball kind of falling apart, but what's left over is like a more rubbery texture. You're essentially segregating all of that gluten. So after a couple of minutes, you just wanna take this and then run it under some cold water until the water runs clear. And it's really at this stage where you start feeling like you do have a ball of rubber in your hands, which is very different from the dough ball you started off with. That mixture you let sit aside for four hours until the wheat starch settles to the bottom and the water is just on top. So now let's deal with the seitan. I'm putting in a quarter teaspoon of baking powder into this and it will sort of just make this rubbery mass a little bit lighter and like kind of put some bubbles into it and it's just, it adds a lot to the texture. Um, I would definitely recommend, and I didn't do this here, but I'm seasoning this with right around a quarter teaspoon of salt and then a little bit of garlic powder as well because um, this doesn't really have any flavor and I found that even with the sauce, 
it was it was better with a little bit of salt in it so I'm tearing these into really small pieces and that once again will help with the rubbery texture and so you end up with these nice kind of bite-sized very um, nice tasting pieces of seitan afterwards These get steamed for 20 minutes on medium high heat with a ton of water in it, lots of steam to cook this seitan. And then after which, do you see how that kind of like bubbled up and it's like nice and poofy? It's just all that texture in the middle so that you don't have one kind of really hard seitan mass. So just leave that aside to cool and then we'll use that for later. So this is a super yummy garlic broth that I learned from a YouTuber called Magic Ingredients. And um, you basically take some star anise, some Sichuan peppercorns, salt, a cinnamon stick, and you boil that up so that all of the flavors are released. Um, the recipe is all going to be down below. And then afterwards, you wait a couple of minutes, let all of that steep, and then what you end up with is this super fragrant liquid that I added about one tablespoon of the um, Lee Kum Ki minced garlic too. You can choose to use um, fresh if you want, but this one's really good. And then also um, right around a teaspoon or so of the Lee Kum Ki sesame oil. And it just, it is a super fragrant broth that I would use for noodles any day. Now time for the second sauce. It's definitely citronese cooking. So um, I have a couple different chili powders here. I have some five spice, some sesame seeds um, that I mixed all together. And then I heated up the oil until it was sort of smoking and I poured it into a dish. Now I tried putting all of the like herbs and whatnot into the oil in the pot and it burned immediately. So this kind of this process of pouring the oil over um, into a cooled bowl is very very useful for not burning everything and then I waited like five minutes and it was still crazy hot but then afterwards very carefully add in right around one tablespoon of the Chang King vinegar in it and it's I'm um, just you know super super good be very very careful Is this recipe finished yet? So we still have the noodles here. So you can see that after four hours, all of the wheat starch has settled to the bottom. And what you wanna do is carefully pour out nearly all of the water from the top. I would say leave right around a quarter of an inch if you can. And sometimes when it got really close, I kind of, um, I took a ladle and I took out any additional water. But you do want this to be somewhat of a, um, it's like a smooth kind of thick milky texture. So I'll kind of show it to you afterwards. So anyone that's watched my dim sum noodle rolls recipe, it is very much like this. So this is about an eight inch cake pan um, and I'm just liberally kind of brushing it with oil. And this is the easiest method I find because I don't really have a pot that's really big enough and to not disturb the batter. So I put in the pan first and the, the steam is like going on medium high heat. Uh, and I put like one to two ladles in there. Unfortunately, I think that there's a slight tilt to my stove. So 
so it kind of tilted all to one way so I needed to add a little bit more batter to even it off but you know typically I'd say like two little fulls is pretty good and you steam that for right around I'd say like two minutes and it's pretty much done it becomes translucent like that and when you take it out it looks a little bit like this so use a spatula to ease that out and um, you know afterwards put it on a dish and brush it with a little bit more oil so that it does not stick to the next piece. So that mixture that I'm brushing on is a little bit of oil and a little bit of water so that you didn't have to make this too, too oily. Oh my gosh, finally assembly time. So I just put in a couple tablespoons of the um, garlic broth. Uh, for me, because I don't like it too, too spicy, I added more of that, but you can just, um, typically you just add in all of these sauces as you please and to your tasting. So this is a little bit of Chungking vinegar that's diluted with just a little bit of water. And then of course you have um, some sauces on the side. The cucumber is there to kind of cool everything. And then I'm going to just rip up a couple pieces of this seitan, which is actually, I really like the texture of this. Um, adding, adding baking powder, that works. I just added all of that sauce for the color in the pictures. You guys know I do not eat it that spicy. But um, again, just put the sauces in as you please and then to your tasting and um, just mix that all around and you get a very flavorful noodle that was essentially just made from a ball of dough. Anyways, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I know all those sauces took a little while to make, but um, I really thought it was such an interesting recipe and really wanted to share it with you all. As usual, if you wanna see more recipes like this, go on and hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you all again next time. Bye.